Awesome, everyone. Let's start the second session. So I believe you have seen my first session where I have introduced the term a derivative and I have spoken about forward contract. So I, be, I believe that the, the basic understanding of what is derivative and how derivative is connected to forward contract, I believe everyone would have understood this. So initially at that era, uh, before 90s, uh, there was a time uh, when basically derivative was used in the form of forward contract, mainly on the underlying asset, which was commodity. So derivative was used in the name of commodity derivative. Okay, so let's go to the textbook of NISF derivative and let's talk about what all is being given in that book. So if I go further and start talking about in the book, so already I have discussed what is derivative here. So this, you already know that part. Going further here, if I talk about the history of derivative, so you can see certain instances is given like in 12th century, so in the European trade fair, uh, sellers signed contract for missing future delivery of the item they sold. Okay, so no one actually knows the history of derivative. These are the few relevant uh, instances which has, has happened. So which which you can track to know that yeah that era also there was a use of derivative. So this is the instance of 12th century. Then in 13th century, uh, you can see they have given a scenario where like English. Uh, monasteries they used to they used to sell their wool for 20 years in advance to the foreign merchant then in 1634 to 1637 there's a tulip mania crisis which happened in holland where uh like the way how we perceive right now gold and real estate as the next next bubble or the next thing which can never fall down like the same thing was happening in holland or netherlands during that era 1634 to 1637 and that actually uh, led uh, to this tulip mania crisis. You can Google it or you can go to Wikipedia and you can read more about this event. Uh, so you'll get to know what has actually happened and you'll get surprised also uh, to know the historical evidence of how people were 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 so much uh, in, in, in the favor of tulip and how much they were desperate uh, for, for trading over the tulip. So that is very, I think, one of the very significant story of derivative which everyone should read about. So I will suggest you go to Wikipedia or Google and read about the tulip mania crisis. Then uh, in 17th century uh, in Japan, uh, they were using uh, future market trading on rice. Okay, I believe at that era only uh, candlestick model was developed. Okay, then uh, then basically in 1848, uh, th there is a well-known uh, exchange in U.S. called Chicago Board of Trade. Uh, they facilitated the trading of forward contract on various commodities. So they like so till then uh, till 1848, uh, forward contract was basically was a mechanism uh, to be bilateral uh, kind of OTC based transactions. But in 1848, there is an exchange called CPOT. Uh, they introduced uh, the trading of forward contract over the exchange, which gradually created the foundation of future contract. So how future contracts are different from forward contract, we definitely will understand with the henceforth session. Then in 1865, Chicago Board of Trade went one step further and they listed the first exchange traded derivative contract in the US, which they called as a future contract. Clear everyone? So when you introduce a forward contract over exchange, then automatically that forward contract was called as a future contract. Clear everyone? So how future contract is different from forward contract and all, we'll gradually understand. The problem with the forward contract because it was a bilateral agreement between the two person, so it was not liquid in nature. You cannot trade over it. But when you allow the same logic over the exchange and create something called future contract, so there, uh, the, the buyer need not need to worry who is the seller. Seller need not need to worry who is the buyer. And exchange will take responsibility for everything. So there is no counterparty risk. And that was the logic of future contract. So in 1919, you can see uh, which there is another uh, subgroup of Chicago Board of Trade, which name was Chicago Butter and Egg Board. It was reorganized to allow future trading. 
Okay, so earlier uh, future trading, future future contract was introduced uh, in Chicago Board of Trade. Then there's another arm of Chicago Board of Trade called Chicago Butter and Egg Board in 1990. They allowed uh, they allowed the trading on future contract. And later on, the name of the Chicago Butter and Egg Board was changed to Chicago Mercantile Exchange. You can see this. Okay, in 1972, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange introduce international monetary market which allow the trading in currency future okay so so you can see in during this era of 1970s gulf war was happening so they thought uh, the the economist or think tanker they thought why not we introduce the concept of derivative uh, over the over the exchange and that created the future contract and then gradually 1970s they thought because currency become very volatile. Uh, if you know a little bit of history of economics, you know that uh, after Second World War, Britain would agreement was signed in the world. And during 1970s, when US President Richard Nixon, he abolished the Britain would agreement, then the currency market become very much volatile. So during that time, they thought, why not we introduce the concept of derivative over an underlying asset called currency. And that led the foundation of currency derivative which we call as a currency future here. Then in 1973, uh, Chicago Board of Option Exchange, they become the first marketplace for trading uh, of listed options. Okay, what are options I'll discuss in the future. Okay, so you have understood about forward contract. I believe a little bit you have understood about future contract. We'll discuss more on future contract later on in our further videos and now the new word have came up which is called option contract so how options are different what is call option put option long call short call long put short put all this we'll discuss further options are much more liquid and tradable instrument than future contract many of you who would be trading in the market they might be trading on options okay so we'll discuss on option trading strategies we'll discuss a lot on options don't worry on that part but uh, for the time being, just remember yourself or uh, just uh, re just get to know there's a word called option. Okay, so in 1975, uh, the Chicago Board of Trade, they introduced a treasury bill of future contract, which was the first successful pure interest rate future. So treasury bill uh, is a short-term debt instrument, uh, which was issued by the central bank of the country on the behalf of of their country uh, for the debt instrument issues to so to curtain the fiscal deficit okay so like for in india also reserve bank of india they issues treasury bill on behalf of government of india treasury bill have life 91 day treasury bill 181 day treasury bill or 364 days treasury bill are being issued by rbi on behalf of government of india where banks other financial institutions participate and that way government get the financing in 1977, Chicago Board of Trade, they introduced T-bond future contract. So, treasury bill was a short-term debt instrument or you can call that as a money market instrument. While T-bond, bonds are basically long-term secure debt instruments. Okay, so first, first, if you if I just uh, recap what all we have understood, we have understood about Chicago Board of Trade, which introduced future contract then uh, there's another arm of Chicago Board of Trade called Chicago Butter and Egg Board. Uh, they introduced, uh, they introduced what they introduced trading on future, and then Chicago Butter and Egg Board, uh, which was renamed as Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they introduced the currency future in 1972s. Then uh, they 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 went one step further from commodity derivative to currency derivative. Now to credit derivative, uh, treasury bill future and then treasury bond futures were introduced in the market over the these exchanges, either Chicago Mercantile Exchange or Chicago Board of Trade. So these all we are talking in the US market. Then they introduce even Euro dollar future contract. Euro dollar future contracts are a dollar denominated debt instrument which are issued outside the US. So outside the US, if you issue any debt instrument credit derivative uh, where the payment will be done in dollar, 
then it was called as euro dollar instrument so they introduced something called euro dollar future contract okay then in 1982 kansas city board of trade launched the first stock index future okay so you can remember so so far we have spoken about uh, first so far we have spoken about uh, basically a commodity derivative we have spoken about currency derivative we have spoken about credit derivative now it's time uh, for for equity derivative so this exchange called kansas city board of trade they introduced what they introduced equity derivative where the underlying assets were indexes and stocks okay then in 1983 chicago board of option exchange they introduced the options on stock indices and over s&p means standard and poor uh, standard and poor 100 and 500 indexes okay so as the kansas city board of trade in 1982 introduced equity derivative having an underlying asset uh, as an index of future or uh, or or index future or and not or index future and stock future then it was a time of options so chicago board of option exchange cboe they introduced options with an underlying asset either index or stocks so equity derivatives options contract were introduced on cboe so you can remember the uh, these events uh, which has actually happened uh, from era to era signifying uh, the development of of derivative market all over the world so first it was introduced uh, in the name of commodity future okay then from commodity future it went to uh, currency future for currency future it went to uh, credit futures okay credit futures credit options and then it went further uh, where equity derivatives uh, in the name of uh, index future index options stock futures stock options were introduced in the world so i believe you are remembered uh, this chronology you have to read little bit about sorry you have to read little bit about this chronology if possible just keep in mind about this okay now the factor which influences uh, the growth of derivative uh, globally what were the factors those factors was was globalization the the, the way how we are integrated with each other now whole world economy is integrated with each other so before the indian market opens at 9 o'clock we need to know what has happened in us market okay what is happening in hong kong market what is happening in chinese and 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 kospi south korean or japanese market that will determine what going to happen in our market so the whole world is integrated okay so any event which happen in any part of world is is gradually affecting all all other world events all other market places so so gradually as we are seeing we are seeing more fluctuations uh, in the underlying asset prices in the financial market because things are much more connected and any event happening in any part ultimately affect all over the world indices and underlying asset so that way the there they become too much volatility in the market you can measure volatility by use by observing wix data so you every day you can check india wix data so somewhere it will be around 14 to 16 so that will tell you the volatility in the market as there is more volatility in the market so definitely there is a more need of instruments uh, where the underlying asset is derivative that felt is gradually increasing with the time okay the world is getting more and more integrated technology is developing and 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 we are living in the era of internet so this all is actually helping more and more people to participate in the market the brokerage cost is getting reduced the now we are living we are living and trading on real time basis over the internet over any part of the world doesn't matter if you want to trade over us exchange you can do very easily sitting in india so all that is possible because of financial integration because of the era of internet and and this way how we are getting more and more interconnected this all has created more volatility in the market and there's more innovations are happening in both in equity and derivative market and more more instruments are coming that way it has actually uh, encouraged more people to 
start getting into the part of derivative market as you've seen in the past uh, gradually i have spoken about uh, how innovations in the derivative market had created a scenario where more and more people started participating and that that actually try to track the global events and the global phenomena through which people can participate and make and and better benefit or better future for themselves inflation is increasing because of the increased inflation uh, the return what we are getting on fds or ppf uh, that is not is enough that is not enough for our future survival so people are are are, are taking the route of equity and derivative market for the trading purpose so that they can generate somewhere a better return over 10% and that is only possible if you participate uh, in the form of derivatives or in currency market or in equity market so that these factors actually uh, has created an environment where people are participating and they're trying to understand and they're trying to leverage themselves over the economic movement of the world so this much uh, this much uh, from the current session if you liked what all has spoken so far please click on the like button and you can use comment option asking if you have any doubt whatever i have done so far in the last two session this is our second session where i have spoken about uh, what all event had happened in the past and now what is the factors uh, which is actually helping in the growth of derivative market so it's time to wind up this session i again i like to thank you everyone uh, to give you valuable time and i hope i have justified your dedications and 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 the and and the belief what you have on me so thank you again to all of you i'll see you all in next week take care bye bye